Oh, God, I love this. I love football, me. Welcome back to another episode of Outcast to Icons. If you still enjoy it, of course, drop a like. That'd be superb. So, <laughs> today we have our first match in charge of KF Veleshna. Now, of course, uh, if there are any North Macedonians in the comment section, do um, feel free to correct me about pronunciations. I'm always wanting to learn this sort of stuff, but also please at the same time understand that the chances of me getting them all right all the time is going to be very, very slim. But I will, of course, do my best. So... <laughs> I've had a little look at the situation regarding the other side. So Korab uh, and Vadari definitely do have ever so slightly, I mean, not harder run-ins, but they're not any easier than ours. So for example, Vadari play uh, second and third in their final two games of the season, and Korab play, I think, sixth and second in their last two games. So, oh, as you can see there right now, in fact, uh, Vadari are away at second place as we speak. And oh, fifth and second, my apologies. No, no, I was right. Sixth and second. So Korab are away. The one thing we've got on our hands today is that we are at home. And a home win today against Gostivar, which would be extremely difficult, but if we were to come up with it, it would at least save us from um, the ignominy of dropping into the permanent relegation positions, which is the last thing we bloody need right now. I've had a look, and the relegation playoff is a single-legged tie. So that is going to be tense as all hell should we get into it. But I think that's really our only chance at staying up uh, when you look at the games that are... I just don't see us overtaking uh Velazarini uh this case now one slight side note is with the whole stadium thing i had a look and it seems to have the team having an unknown stadium i don't know why this is one of the problems with the real lower 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 league databases unfortunately um uh, hopefully it's not going to be an issue like the matches still go ahead and everything looks fine in the sims i'm just hoping that it doesn't cause any problems when we actually try to play a game uh this is one of these things that's just almost impossible to test for when you're trying to prepare for databases like this so hopefully fingers crossed there's not going to be any problems with that and we should be fine the team aren't super happy with me at the moment um uh, because i tried to speak to them and you know how much players hate that. However, I have turned on the third division uh, in North Macedonia as well. Should we drop down so that we won't get immediately sacked, I think is the issue. Hopefully that won't happen. But yeah, I've managed to switch that on. So that will join at the end of the season anyway, no matter what happens. Did a little bit of looking around as well. So it turns out that uh, Veleshta is a uh, tiny little town of about five and a half thousand people down on Lake Orid. Uh, interestingly, so these guys must be a local rival to us as well. Kind of near the border uh, with Albania as well. So it's a very small little area. Area, an interesting place to be and i'm looking forward to spending a lot of time here now we're actually not a bad side if you look at the stats which i'm actually just going to quickly take you through now like obviously this is before we joined but you could see seventh best here on expected goals certainly a lot better than the teams down towards the bottom you'd have to say uh, although Dorita, yeah it's a weird one and then defensively as well arguably even better there too so i don't think they were as bad they're certainly not cut adrift in any way they look like a reasonable side i'd have to say so tactical meeting let's jump into things and see how we go of course i forgot about this jazz <laughs> so obviously changes to the team will be made for sure so this let me just do a selection advice and we'll, we'll adjust on the fly essentially I, I looked at the squad that we had and tried to find the best shape firstly that would allow us to in theory get players playing where they want to be for the just to start things off. Then it's difficult to try and build an actual, you know, tactic around that. But I, originally I thought we were going to go standard 4-2-3-1, but we just don't have enough players that are able to pushing so high up, essentially. So I figured that we may have to drop back to a more sort of regular 4-1-4-1 type of system. Something I don't think I've ever really played on FM before. After sorting things out tactically, I figured that you try to keep things relatively simple. Um, so we're going to be fairly, not super high pressing, but a bit more urgent. Decent pass directness, speed. Part, you know, a bit high tempo, pass into space, that general kind of stuff. Long kicks from the goalkeeper to try and just get that ball forward, get it quickly, try to counter on teams, because that's kind of what we're going to do. I really don't like using anything other than positive at the moment as far as mentality goes. However, it's something I might like to experiment with throughout the rest of this save. Now, as for the actual lineup, I don't know if this is the exact one I want to go with. We are missing our starting centre-back, Endrushi, who is probably the best centre-back that we have at the club right now. He's going to be out with a little... He's got a concussion, so he's going to probably miss this... Well, he's going to clearly miss this game. He'll be back for the next one so we're a little bit weak at the center back spots for now but it's not the end of the world the one issue in this squad like in terms of the biggest gap in the team is right backs uh velkovsky is the best right back at the club and you'll understand that, that i mean this is what i mean like he is not really 
He's got tackling of nine, marking of five. He's the best right back at the club, including youth players too. So yeah, um, that that's going to be something that we'll definitely have to look into. So the main thinking behind this was to make sure that we got a striker front. I nearly went for a pressing forward, but then I eventually just caved and went for more simple stuff. Met Salah to try and push forward and provide a bit more um, support going forward. Left side of the attacking uh, winger as well to get down here and get some balls across. Supporting winger on this side to make sure, because obviously with the Met Salah pushing forward, we don't want to leave ourselves too exposed. Deep line playmaker back here and a little box to box midfielder. It's just an idea for something to start off with. We'll kind of just see as we go along what's going to happen. I just, the, the issue with tactics on saves like this is simply that my normal way of building a tactic is we go into the start of a new save. I have a whole preseason, tons of friendlies that I can watch on comprehensive and analyze things. Whereas the kind of the fun part, I would argue, about a save like this is we have to do it all on the fly during league games, which could be catastrophic sometimes. And I'm kind of looking forward to the madness, to be honest. If we could just build something that's solid enough to get us through the rest of the season and just maybe pull us out of the mire, then I will take that. Now, uh, I've already set up set pieces. I... Ask my assistant. You have no opposition instructions. Uh, excellent work, my friend. Fantastic. You're getting replaced next year. Just going to show their attacking players under the weaker foot, press the striker a little bit more, try to get in on him, win the ball off of him. But other than that, we haven't really got much idea. As for the bench, uh, ooh, who do I want to put on the bench? This is nothing. It's going to take me a while to learn the names of the players as well. I think we want Endy uh, Chechai. Chechai? Again, apologies, because he can cover multiple positions in this squad, and that's kind of what we need. We'll put him on there instead of a goalkeeper, because, you know, goalkeepers don't really get injured. Um, so, yeah. Moment of truth, I suppose, friends. Let's get into the first game of this save against Gostivar. Massive game for us. Can we pull out a result? Honestly, I'm more worried about the game just breaking. So, for those of you who are unaware, last week I had an absolutely game-breaking issue that caused me to have to reinstall basically everything about the game including the game, graphics card drivers, everything. The game just would not work anymore. And every time there's a slight little bug, I get scared to death because I don't want to be in that situation again. So hopefully we're all good. Let's get into the match. Please don't crash. Okay, please don't crash. There's going to be a few of these, isn't there? <laughs> right, come on. Team's warming up. Show me that stadium. All right, I get your point. Let's move along. This looks really nice, by the way. Now, the language barrier could be an issue. Yes, I figured that might be the case. Hey, Asani's a big fan. Life stuff. That's more like it. Okay. We can't really talk to them, but we can point fingers. And I guess that's our plan from now on. Right, let's crack on. Come on. Yes, stadium is there. It looks like it's the back of an industrial estate. Apologies for that. It was on... Oh, my God. Okay, yeah. Cheers, game. Thank you. <laughs> One of the problems with having reinstalled the game is you get the tutorials back again. Um, there is literally no crowd here. I'm fairly convinced that this is just an industrial estate. The aim is going to just be to try and keep Gostivar as quiet as possible and try to create a few little chances from time to time. It's a nice ball to the back post for Asani. What a strike. I think that's hit the post. Davishi. Go on. Yes, well played. Nice. Abdul's got it now. Can he find an out ball? There's, it's going to look weird. It's the lower leagues. Loga just lets the ball roll past him, unfortunately. Um, passing into space with a striker that isn't that quick might be something that we could potentially revisit. Um, Istrefi, getting it forward. Can he get into the box? Maybe win a pen. Ball in a Loga with the header, and it's a goal. Out in Loga for Leicester 1, Gostivar 0. And that is a wonderful ball in, and that's what we need from him right now. Beautiful start to the season. Start to the season, he says, 25 games into the... That's great, though. Brilliant header from Ismaili. Istrefi gets into a great spot, but this is just a gorgeous ball in. Loga gets into the space in between the two centre-backs. Nothing they're doing about that, and we lead in an absolutely crucial bottom-of-the-table match. Come on! Vardari are actually winning away at Tetex Totovo, which is the last thing we need right now. Nice ball again, and Estrefi down this right-hand side is definitely providing a problem. So far, Loga, and it's put over the bar by Abdul, but so far, really happy. I mean, it's certainly not been a magical first half from either team so far, but Altin Loga's goal has given us the lead. They've had no shots on target. We've had just the one and look a bit more threatening than them so far. But remember, these guys are fourth in the league, and I'm actually pretty pleased with this so far, and it definitely gives us, like branching off points to try to improve. We're winning. That's all we really could ask for here. The players look inspired and motivated. Come on. Right. Second half, get out of this game with a 1-0 victory. We wouldn't be out of danger yet, though, uh, due to the results elsewhere as things stand, but it would give us a much, much better chance of avoiding that uh, dreaded drop zone. Nice work again. We're winning a lot of good balls in the midfield right now, and it's making a huge difference. And Estrefi is massively dangerous down this right hand side and oh and again good play you might even get another chance at the cherry here nope cleared away into that office building over there though it looks like a car park actually there's a burger van parked upstairs with them playing the system they oh no he's let it go behind here jacoby 
and it's a poor effort just wide, but that was a dangerous one. And at the moment, oh, go on, Asani's free kick, and it's well saved by the goalkeeper. Does anyone else just really love lower league football on FM? Like, really, really lower league football on FM. I, I just find it so much fun to play down here. By the way, our, our relegation rivals have been equalised against, which is excellent news. As things stand, we would actually be safe, from that at least. We're going to get Joreski on for a little bit for the second period. Uh, it's the same sort of story with the DLP, uh, Dalcheski, but then it's FM and DLPs. So I suppose that's really not a huge surprise. He's one of the better players. We probably should keep him on for now. But as things stand, we wouldn't be out of the danger. Well, sorry, we wouldn't be out of the situation of potentially even staying up here. As things go, oh no, please no. 88 minute, don't you dare let this in. Oh, good save, my friend. The only save he's had to make in the 88th minute there. Right, let's waste some time. Three minutes of stoppage time here. Very, very even. Go oh, wow. Okay. And Luma will just bump that away. We've got 20 seconds to get through here before we get, well, a win in our first game in charge. It has not been pretty. Make no mistake about it. But it doesn't need to be pretty to survive. And that might roll out of play. It's not, though. Defend the cross. Oh, and it's over the bar. They pushed it all towards the end there, Gostivar, but it's not going to pay off and we've won. It's Veleshta 1, Gostivar 0. The winning goal scored by Loga, but just a really strong performance defensively. Across the ball from the defenders, Loga scores the goal. Midfield's definitely caused some problems. Estrefi looked phenomenal down that right-hand side. Uh, with there's definitely stuff to work on elsewhere on the team in that midfield section to maybe be more creative, but that is a huge win. Come on! No, I don't think it was. In fact, no, it was Korab losing in the 94th minute to Cadino, which is that actually guarantees us not to be in the, uh, the the guaranteed relegation spots. And bearing in mind now that goal from uh, Reskowski for Orid has given us a chance to maybe even escape relegation on the final day. We would have to win, which is going to be very tough against top of the league, I imagine. But at the very least, we've given ourselves a chance to stay up. And that's all you could really ask for. Come on. Oh, God, I love this. I love football, me. Right then, we're back. We've had a two week break. Everyone's had a chance to refresh. Something bad has happened. You know how it goes. So let me just set the scene. Uh, I decided that it'd be a fun idea to take the players out on a little school trip, a little field trip down to Lake Orid. It's nowhere near as Orid as I thought it was going to be, to be honest. It's actually bloody beautiful. Like, look at this place. It's a god... It's it's like paradise. However, it, it didn't prove to be so uh, fruitful for us. We took the players out. They went to get some ice cream, some gelato, you know, sit down by the beach, enjoy their time. Sasso Jarevsky had other ideas because he thought it'd be a fun idea to go jet skiing on the lake. Um... Don't know where he got the jet skis from. Nevertheless, he's now injured himself with a hip injury and is probably going to have to retire. You silly, silly man. You, you need that £160 a week, Sasso. And yet there he is. So yeah, jet ski accident, Sasso Jureski out with a hip injury uh, for whatever, essentially. I'll just quickly show you. They reckon three to five months, but he's 38 years old. And honestly, I don't think he'll be playing any more matches in his entire career, which is a very sad time. And for have it, to have it end like this, should have just got an ice cream like the rest of us, Sasso. But now we have bigger fish to fry. We're playing against Skopje. They're top of the league. Technically, they could not win. the. They have to go and win here, to be fair. Um, we can no longer finish ninth or 10th. There's still a chance that with the biggest win of our the save so far, we could technically still stay up, provided Cadino do us a favor and we come up with an insane victory. I don't see it happening, but what more can we do but try? So the plan today is going to be the same strategy because obviously we won the game. However, I am going to do a next match only thing, and that is to play for set pieces in this match. I, I want to see if we can just try to get some set piece opportunities because I think that might be our best bet against a team of this kind of quality. So they want to bring back... Ah, that's fine, actually. That will shuffle our defense around. So um, we should now be in better shape with our centre-back pairing that have done pretty well lately, kept a clean sheet on their first game. So things I liked about the tactical shape, defensively, looked pretty stable. Uh, Istrefi looked really good going forward. Interestingly, as the supporting player, he looked pretty decent. Logo was great up front. Midfield definitely could do with some work, but that's starting point. I expect us to get hammered today, probably, but that's, that's just, we're going to have to accept that. If we pull off a miracle, then so be it, but I just don't see it myself. Oh, look at these fancy bastards playing their wing backs and everything in this league. Very nice. In other news, the previous manager had our striker being retrained as a shadow striker. No wonder you got sacked, mate. Who the hell would play that kind of tactic in this division? Next, you'll be playing a libero. Right, here we go. Away against Skopje. This is huge. If we pull off a shock win away at the current league leaders, we could potentially stay in the top flight. At the top flight, he says. That's ambitious. <laughs> had a couple of little early openings there. Asani. That's cleared away. Oh, come on. Come on. There we go. Again, the centre-back's doing a really good job at pushing out and winning that ball, providing some space. We've started off okay here. Istrefi. 
to the right, whips it in, and it's the back post and cleared away. But once again, it's coming straight back out to us so far. We're really looking quite nice in the first 10 minutes here. All we needed was a manager. Oh, that's poor. That, that was not a good ball through from Dalczewski. The problem is they've got real quality. And oh no. And here it comes. Kirovsky's through. The goalkeeper has given him the entire goal and still saved it. Jonas is showing off a little bit there. I don't know what his positioning was. I hope it's less than 10. Um, and a good save again from Jonas, but two really good stops. And I guess that's why they're top of the league. There's another free kick in the same position. Markovsky, and it's off the crossbar, I think. And Jonas is there again. We've not been awful in this game so far. A lot of players commit forward here. And it's cleared over the... Oh, that goalkeeper couldn't get there. And Kirovsky, the man who failed to take the lead for them moments ago, has now put them in front. We've offered a bit more from an attacking threat today. Uh, we've just not looked anywhere near as stable at the back. But I think really what that comes down to it's a great header keeper maybe could do a bit better with that one but it is what it is unfortunately um yeah they're a much better side oh god another one wow we're giving away a lot of the free kicks on the edge of our box here and it's just wide of the post ball through and it's flicked on again but we should be able to wow look at the space from De Whoa, the pace from desnich oh go on asani on the stroke of half time and abdul Oh, it's offside. It's offside. Abdul was there, but it was offside. It's 1-0 to Skopje at halftime. Uh, we've actually offered a little bit in this game. Wait, no, he wasn't offside, I don't think. I think it was the follow-up. We've not actually even been that bad in this game, considering these guys are top of the league. We've given them a bit of a run, only conceding off that free kick. Clear through the middle. Oh, whoa, Jonas. Okay, F fancy. Don't know if you needed to do that, buddy. Abdul, right, this might be a chance for us. Get the ball up higher in the pitch, and now try and fire one in for Loga and see what he can do on the end of it. Is Mele. He's got past two of them. Whips it in. Abdul flicks it. A goal. And it's a, well, not a good save. Lazarevsky, a very comfortable save. Uh, we're losing the aerial challenges to their, their strikers, really. And this is the situation that arrives at that. Markovsky with the strike. And Dejan Markovsky makes it 2-0 to Skopje. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's been our issue in today's match. Their strikers are able to win the aerial challenges against our centre-backs. And it's causing all sorts of problems, basically. Because they're not able to head that ball away. And it's another situation here where he's just completely outmatched against their very, very tall striker. And yeah, although if they're tall, it might mean that they lack speed, just like ours. And slipped in behind for Desnich. And it's 3-0. <laughs> Off the post, Dario Desnich. They broke in behind us. It feels like they might have a big man, little man partnership. And perhaps that was the wrong decision from us there. But hey, in these sort of situations, you kind of just have to try stuff out. Because it looked like we were probably going to lose this one anyway. And now we very much are. Once again, brilliant piece of play from Kirovsky to flick that down. And that's always been the issue in today's game. It's a great finish as well off the post. Clattered over the top again. And yeah, I mean... What a finish that is from Zoglev. Skopje have been lethal with their finishing. Pushing the lineup was definitely not the uh, the right idea in this game. But hey, you learn by trying these things. That was just an idea at the time that has definitely not paid off. We're going to switch that one back now, I think, because it's just compressing the field in weird places. It would be nice for us to score a goal or something. Um, but I don't know. They're a good side. Here we go. Chance to slip one through, perhaps. He's found him, and it's in the bottom corner. Samed Kodryovsky gets a late one back in for Valeshta. Obviously, we'll be on this, but I think that moving the line back has definitely made us more stable and able us to get the ball further up the pitch and actually start playing some stuff around their box. Much, much better. He found a lot more space just here sitting. Lovely ball through, and it's a great finish from Kadri Kadriovsky, who's just come off the bench. Good clearance. is Yes, he is there. Kadriovsky in a bit of space, too. They've stepped off of him. Can he keep going? He's all the way through, Kadriovsky. Goes for goal. Well saved by the goalkeeper with his knee, apparently. But Kadriovsky's looked uh, threatening since he came onto the pitch, uh, as it goes. But I still think there's some positives to be taken from some of our attacking play in, in this game. Defensively, we were shocking. Oh, good. We get to watch them be crowned champions. To be fair, they were going for the title in this match. And we gave them a game, I guess? Is it a missed opportunity? Yes. Yes, it is. Uh, with Cadino winning 4-0 away from home. But what I would say is, would we really be expected to go and win away to the team that are champions in order to stay up? Had we done it, would have been great. But let's face it, it was unlikely. So we're going to be playing against FK Schlogger in the playoff final. Oh, which will, of course, be in the next episode. Now, of course, it's only going to be one game. However, we'll do a lot of other stuff in the episode to do with doing some scouting. Do some stuff that you wouldn't normally see because there's plenty of things that we're going to have to do and i'm very much looking forward to it the main thing is we got the win in the game that we needed to to avoid being automatically relegated and i still think we've got a good chance at winning this game to be honest i, I think with the right approach i think we can be strong enough to get that and stay up this season that's the plan anyway so if you've enjoyed this and i really hope you have i'm having a bloody lovely time so far drop a like that'd be awesome if you're new to the channel subscribe uh, that'd be sick too i stream on twitch tuesdays thursdays and on saturday mornings 11 till 3 so go follow there too and i'll see you guys tomorrow thank you so much for watching hold your gun capybara bye-bye